Welcome back to the Upper Tier Podcast, folks, the football podcast we bring you each and every week on YouTube. This is the show, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, let's the show where we go through all the weekend's Premier League results. Um, we categorize them into the good, the bad, and the ugly. This is going to be a slightly different show than usual, insofar as we only had a limited amount of fixtures at the weekend. So we use some other parameters in categorizing the good, the bad, and the ugly. Let's start down with a rundown through the results. Leeds won Arsenal four, Martinelli with two, Saka and Smith row with the others, and a penalty from Rafinha. Leeds still in serious trouble. Newcastle nil, Man City four, Diaz, Cancelo, Mares, and Sterling. Clearly the outbreak at the moment not affecting Man City. They're absolutely on a drive at the moment. Wolves nil, Chelsea nil. Yeah, no goal scorers there, obviously, but um, worrying times for Chelsea still on the slide, but um, we know they had requested the match to be taken, uh, to be postponed, but they were denied that and then having to field a weakened team, especially using Kovacic, who's only back off injury. Spurs 2, Liverpool 2, an absolutely fabulous game for the neutral, um, but some strange decisions in that game. Goals from Kane and Son for Spurs and Jota and Robertson. For Liverpool. Let's get into this. The good. Arsenal were at Leeds. Martinelli on fire, propelling Arsenal into the top four. Looks like Arteta's decisions is paying dividends. But what now for the likes of Aubameyang and Pepe and players like that who seem to be frozen out in the cold at the moment, especially with Arsenal driving forward now and getting some great results with a lot of balance in the team now and stuff like that. They literally had put Leeds to bed very early in this game. So onwards and upwards for Arsenal, even though some of the teams behind them have a couple of games in hand. Um, it's always good to get your points on the board if possible. Uh, also in the good, uh, Man City. That train just keeps on rolling, doesn't it, for Man City? It's just player after player, win after win, goal after goal. Really starting to look like champions elect. Um, but interesting, like the COVID outbreak hasn't really hit them hard yet. So they literally have a full squad available to them. And it wasn't unusual that they got this win, albeit that uh, a Newcastle at 1-0, they should have had a penalty uh, with Wilson and um, Edison taking him out which could have evened up the game. But no doubt, I still think Man City would have ran out winners. They're just on a run at the moment and they're on fire. Uh, I put Chelsea in the good at the moment. I know they're on their slide and I know they've dropped an awful lot of points recently. Um, they've had had a lot of injuries and they have been hit badly by COVID. So I sort of dropped them into the good because fair play to them for actually fielding a squad with so many players missing. You would wonder at times, does the Premier League actually really care about player welfare when you're looking at these games not being postponed? And then Chelsea in a position where they have to play the likes of Kovacic, who's only back after a bad injury, but yet getting thrust into a game like this and stuff like that because Chelsea simply don't have any choice. And the boy Chalaba having to play in midfield and various things like that change up. These, these are... You know, it's trying to find a balance at the moment between the risk of, of, you know, the COVID and the players and then the risk of trusting players into positions they haven't played in before or players getting rushed back off injury because you're short for your squad and the risk that it poses on those players as well. I'd like to say the same about Liverpool going ahead with the game. They didn't look for it to be postponed. Um, but they were missing, I think, seven or eight key players yesterday. Van Dijk was missing, Fabinho was missing, Henderson was missing, Thiago was missing, Origi was out, Curtis Jones was missing. The, the, the list goes on and on and on. But I think I think Klopp's view at the moment is that the league should keep on going ahead and where you can feel the team matches should be played. And I think that's the, the stance that they came out of the meeting today as well, that the Premier League is going to try and push on and we're going to have to try and figure out a way of living with this COVID stuff and how we get around it and how we tackle it and stuff like that. So it remains to be seen in the next round of fixtures what way the postponements and stuff go like that and what the parameters are. So we shall see. In the bad, um, there's only one team this week that goes into the bad. We literally only had four fixtures, so it has to be Leeds. They're in total free fall at the moment, look wide open at the back, and we're taking apart at every counter-attack by Arsenal. You know, I think somewhere along the line, Leeds have forgotten that football is a game of attack and defend. Um, and their defence at the moment is just non-existent. 
Bielsa now right on the foreign line. I've been listening to Leeds fans over the last couple of days. They're talking about like he needs to go and they're done with him and all this kind of thing. I'm not sure if that's the flavour throughout the Leeds fan base. Let us know in the comments if it is. Um, and it's tough on them as well because they had quite of um, they had a light enough squad before all this COVID stuff started breaking out anyway. And they had a number of key injuries. They had lost Bamford for a number of weeks and stuff like that. So is their position at the moment a true reflection of Leeds or will we see an improvement over the next few weeks as players come back and we try and get over this COVID situation? But I would say Bielsa has till about January to put this right. Otherwise, he's going to find himself in hot water and they may have to make a change mid-season. Um, in terms of the ugly, we didn't put a team in the ugly this week and we didn't put a match in there. What I did put in there was the referees and VAR. Very simply, they were just so poor at the weekend. I mean, that Newcastle challenge, that was a stonewall penalty without a shadow of a deal. And then if you look at the Liverpool game yesterday, no denying that Robbo's tackle uh, was a sending off um, purely out of frustration. Um, but that Harry Kane, I mean, to turn around and say that that Harry Kane tackle wasn't a red card is ridiculous. And the fact that it wasn't even looked at is even more ridiculous when the referee, Paul Tierney, he had no problem with toddling over and looking at the Robbo challenge. And then not to mention the Jota one. And his excuse for the Jota one is absolutely pitiful. That Jota had pulled up. Jota was in free flow about to take a shot when he got shoved onto the ground in the box. It was as clear a cut penalty as you'd ever see. And again, wasn't even looked at. The VAR didn't even request the referee to go and look at it at all. Clear as be damn penalty. But it's just, even some of the cars that were being handed out, like you look at that Jota shove and stuff like that. Moments later, Mane was involved in attacking the exact same thing and he gave a free kick. So the same instant in, in the field of play is a free kick, but in the box it's not a penalty. I just couldn't understand the refereeing yesterday. It's the worst set of refereeing I've seen in a long, long time. And Paul Tierney should be made come out and be answerable for those quite, those um, decisions that were made. And I don't know who was working in Stockley Park yesterday, but they must have been sitting on their hands all day because they just basically didn't review anything until it suited them. So really, really poor. So this week's ugly is the referees and VAR without a shadow of it. They really need to pick up the game. I don't know what they're thinking at the moment, but they're getting so much stuff wrong. It's rude. Like it's just incredible, you know what I mean? And that's just the way it is. We're gonna have to figure that out, and they're gonna have to figure it out. But the, the, the level of refereeing at the moment in the Premier League, it's it's, it's what is the biggest league in the world, the most viewed league in the world, you know what I mean? They're the best paid referees in the world, and yet it's the worst level of refereeing that you could experience. But this has been the good, the bad, and the ugly, the show we bring you each week where we take a look at all the Premier League action and we categorise it. Leave your comments down below. Let us know what you think. Who would you have put into the good and the bad and the ugly? Are Arsenal on the up? Are Leeds in serious trouble? Is it time to change Bielsa out? Chelsea, their woes continue. Can they get their players back? Should games be postponed? What you're thinking on a circuit break? Is he just kicking the can down the road? Should football continue? And if it continues, should have been continuing for everyone, not just the select few. Also, what was your thinking yesterday on the referees and the virus? Let us know in the comment. You'll get us on YouTube, Dynamo Podcast Network, and Spotify for audio version show. We will back to you again this week. Till next time, a pleasure.